Hello, this is Dr. Krauss with a video on compiling C code from the terminal. Uh, I'm assuming that the students who are using Windows are able to use code blocks and so they don't need any extra help. Um, I'm assuming if you're using Linux you probably already know how to do this stuff. Um, I do have one Chromebook plus cross teeny student who would like a little bit of help and then uh, even that though I think it's pretty hard to have cross teeny without having um, the GCC compiler already installed, at least it was on my Chromebook. Uh, so mostly this is about uh, helping Mac OS X users. So kind of the big idea is that compiling the code is actually pretty easy. It's getting all the tools installed that is a little bit tricky. Uh, what I mean by that is, um, oh, sorry, I got to clean this up a minute. So I've got a file called hello world.c. It is this super complicated uh, C file, the main issue here is just to remember to include standard I.O. Other than that, it's good. If I want to compile that code, I use the GNU C compiler, or GCC is the command. I specify with a dash O what I want the output file to be called, and then I give it the name of the input file. I hit return, and it's done. And I can see the newly created output file here. And then I can just execute that and it prints my super sophisticated um, output to the terminal. So GCC dash O output file name input file name done. Um, really straightforward. The trick is getting GCC installed in Linux and Crostini. I think that's pretty simple and probably has already been done for you on OS X. It might be just a bit more complicated. Um, so it turns out there's actually two steps to this process. Compiling the code is one thing, but you're also going to have to be able to write the code and edit the code. And for that, you need a text editor. And if you're having trouble choosing one, that's kind of a separate discussion. So text edit, sorry, let me get my little laser pointer thing here. It's probably already installed, um, but it's like super low feature. Um, your text is going to be literally just black and white. And that might not seem like a big deal, but code is just a lot easier to read if some things are kind of color coded. So my pound include is red, and my int is blue, and my main is purple. And all of this is just a little bit easier to read because it's not just pure text. But I'm pretty sure that text edit is installed by default. Um, but it's going to be either just white on black or black on white text, depending on how you have it set it up. And so that, to my mind, that wouldn't really get it done. But I've got a long history of having some strong opinions about my text editors. So VS Code is a good option. Um, I use Emacs. Um, other people really like Eclipse. There's probably a thousand of them, and lots and lots of computer nerds have very strong opinions. But you need some kind of text editor. And then you need to get the GCC compiler installed. Um, and how to do that on a Mac is just a little bit tricky. The trick is that a Mac has Unix running in the background, which has all this powerful command line stuff. But then it has all this pretty easy to use kind of fluff in the foreground. Not that I just called OS X fluff, but whatever. Um, and so how to get at the tools that you need to install some of this open source software that's been around for decades is a little bit tricky. And so on, a, like I said, in Linux or Crostini, it's probably already there. If you were to type GCC space dash V at the terminal, and as long as you get some kind of response, then you already have GCC installed. If you're in on a Mac, Homebrew is a really good way to try to install, I mean there's like three different ways to try to install Unix style software on a Mac. Homebrew tries to do only the things that OS X doesn't already do and so it tends to be a really clean, really good way to do that. The only trick is as a result it depends on the Xcode command line tools. Now it might, and I I've had Xcode installed on my Mac for a really long time. It's like several gigabytes to download Xcode, which is kind of a pain. And it actually, if you just download Xcode, it doesn't include the command line tools. So you need the command line tools of Xcode, and it may or may not, I can't really test this easily myself. It might be possible to just install the command line tools and not install the multiple gigabyte mess that is Xcode. Um, I don't know. 
Um, so again, installing Homebrew itself is really simple. If you go to the website brew.sh, and there's like this great big long command um, here. So if you just copy this thing and paste it into a terminal, so get like a little command C going, go over to your terminal, do a little command. Now that I'm, I'm not going to do it because I've already done it a long time ago, but a little command V action and execute that and it'll take a few seconds but it'll install homebrew the trick is getting not just homebrew but also the command line tools so the next trick would be it might be possible to just copy and paste xcode dash select space dash dash install and that command in a terminal might be enough to install just the xcode command line tools I think, based on what I've read. If that doesn't work, then you actually need to install Xcode itself. Um, it is free. Uh, you get it from the Mac App Store. It's just gigantic and mm, takes a long time to download and all that. So try this first with just the command line tools. This is like a couple hundred gigabytes, sorry, megabytes, a couple hundred megs as opposed to several gigs. See if this is enough. If it's not, then you got to go to the App Store and find Xcode itself, which is gigantic. And then once you have all those things, you know, Homebrew and Xcode installed, all you got to do is type brew install GCC into a terminal and that should spit out some crap and everything is good. And then just like the Linux people, if you think you've installed it correctly, type GCC dash V. And as long as it prints out something, um, kind of surprised that I didn't get on my cross teeny I got a lot of stuff at any rate it said here's some information about some version or something as long as that doesn't print out like if I just made up a fake command it would say command not found so as long as GCC dash V prints out something and doesn't say command not found then you have it correctly installed um, and then you can just copy and paste a hello world example into a text file and then just run this command. Now the one trick with that is going to be, uh, maybe I'll, I think I have a video on this, but maybe I'll have to make one. This has to be done in the directory that contains your source file. So you're going to have to learn a few basic terminal commands like cd, pwd, and ls in order to kind of navigate your way around the terminal. I'm pretty sure I already have a video on that and I will see if I can dig that up. Otherwise, I'll make a quick video on some basic Linux commands to get you around the terminal. So that should be all it takes. And then um, once you compile it, you can run the f code. Um, you might have to do a dot slash and then the name of your output file. This just says in the current folder, run this file. Probably just this will work. Let me know if that's an issue. Um, but yeah, you got to get Homebrew installed. You got to get Xcode command line tools installed. And then the installing of GCC should be fairly easy and fast. And the compiling should be relatively simple. And then you execute the stuff. And then every time you want to compile, you just do something like this. So let me know what questions you have. And like I said, I'll look around and see if I can find a video on uh, basic terminal commands. Thanks.